Okay, we talked about different credentials in our network and our network is kind of work group. Now let me go and create the usernames and passwords on my computer. Actually, I have some usernames and passwords on my computer, but I here I want to add more. So if I want to do this, I need to go to two places. Actually, I can do it from control panel and if I want to reach the control panel I can right click on this Windows menu button and go to control panel here this is the easiest way to reach the control panel and here you can see that I have selected small icons so that I can see this way now if I go down I can see user accounts here I can click on that and by going to user accounts I can see my own user account and if I have the the I have enough privileges, I can go and change another account by using manage another account. Now by going to manage another account, you can see different users present on my computer. For example, I have uh, Jack, Hillary, Josh, Terry, Muhammad, and these are the users that can reach to my computer. And uh, they may have their own computers. But they can, you know, log into my computer as well using their own usernames and password. So this is one way to manage users and, uh, you know, computers. I can, of course, go to uh, my Windows button here, right-click on that, and go to select Computer Management from here. By going to Computer Management, there is another place to you know manage your users and groups and this is an efficient way this is much better than the the users uh, account in you know control panel so I prefer you come and refer to this part you open local users and groups and if I click on users I can see that I have these users assigned uh, you know assigned to my computer here now if I want to create a new user I can do it in two different ways. As I told you, I can go to user accounts and go to add a new user in PC setting. And if I click on that, PC settings opens for me and here is add a user. You know, this is other users. I can click on add a user and here is the name of my user. For example, Jen. And she must be assigned a passport, of course she must have a passport. So I type a passport for Jen here and give this password to her. She may change her password in a later time. So I need to have a password hint and since this is a common password that I use, I just do this like this. Now I click on next and Jen, is this a child account? No, Jen is not a child actually, she's a grown up girl. So now you can see Jane is here. Now if I click on Jane's account, I can click on edit and change her, you know, user type. As you can see, there are only three different user types here. One of them is administrator. An administrator has, uh, you know, a lot of privileges, a lot of permissions on my computer. She can do anything she wants. I don't want her to do this. I just want her to be a standard user. A standard user has just uh, enough permissions to do her job on my computer. And if this is a child account, I can go and you know enable parental control on child. I don't want to you know do this right now. So I select a standard user and click on OK. So let me close this. And now I have Jen here. Let me find Jen here. If it is not here, if she is not here, I need to refresh this. So let me go back to user accounts and click on manage another account again. Now you can see Jen here. By clicking on that, you can change the account name if you want. You can change her password. You can set up a family safety. This is kind of a parental control for your child. You can change the account type from here. You can delete the account. And you can, of course, manage another account. So I don't like here. Actually, this is a you know, not so flexible place to work with user accounts. I close this and go to computer management. Let me refresh this. 
if I refresh here, you can see that Jen is present here. Now, if I right-click on Jen's account, go to Properties, you can see that uh, it tells me user cannot change password, password never expired. These are the, the different options that I can, you know, work with them. Actually, the best part is here, Member of. And if you see, there are some groups that Jen is a member of them. And these groups have permissions to do on my computer. So I can, you know, delete Jen from these groups, or I can add Jen to another group. Let me see the group and oh, let me cancel this out. If I go and click on groups, I can see different groups on my computer. And of course, I have made a group named Sales. So I can create my user accounts, I can create my groups, and add users to my groups and this way if I want to manage a lot of users at once I can just go and manage that group I do not need to go to each user and give him or her some permission if I want to give read uh, permission on some documents to for example users that are part of the sales group I can just go to sales group and give permission to that group and this is why I want to do this. Assuming that I have, I, I want, I need some, uh, you know, new group. I can just right-click any place here, or I can right-click on groups. It doesn't matter which one. I can go and click on new group and just type a group name. For example, this is going to be support group. You can add members right from here. You can add members later from user profile. It doesn't matter which one you select. I prefer to add from here and here you can see that I need to type some name if I do not remember the name that's okay click on advance click on find now now you can see all names here I can select one or multiple users at once I want to have Jen and I want to have let me go down for example Terry so to select two users as I told you in selection part in you know Windows Explorer, I need to press control button. Click on the second one, release control button. As you can see, Terry is selected and Jan is selected too. So I click on OK. Now you can see two different names here. As you can see, the computer name is the thing that you see first, then a backslash, then the user that is he his or her credentials exist on this computer. So I click on OK and I added these two users to a new group that I created. Click on Create. The group is created. Click on Close. And now you can see your support group here. Let me find it. Where are you? Support group. And oh, that's it. In the end. If I click, right click on this support group and go to Properties, you can see the same picture that you used to see in previous section. Okay. Cancel this out. Now, if I want to add, create a new user, I can right click on Users folder, click on New User, and as you can see, I can add a username, add a full name for user, add a description if it is necessary, have some passwords, and some other, you know, items here. I click close. Now I know how to how to add users, how to add groups, how to add users to these groups. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is to create shares. Now of course you can create shares from multiple places, but I prefer to create it in File Explorer.